All right, here we go. Um, I'm Travis Nielsen. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a maintainer on the Rook project. I've uh, been working with, with this project in Kubernetes for the last two or three years, and it's been a great journey. So I'd be happy to talk about it today. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Annette Cluett, and um, I'm in the storage business unit. And I just wanted to just set a little bit of context here because uh, Travis is going to talk about OpenShift container storage, which Red Hat currently has. And the solution today for OpenShift container storage is a combination of Haketi and Gluster. And it's highly integrated with OpenShift. Some of you may have, be using it or know about it. Um, what Travis is going to talk about and what the workshop was about is what we're calling next generation. And it is based on Ceph. Uh, we'll provide object, file, and block. Today, Gluster uh, provides file and block. So it's not that we don't have a solution today, but this is the next generation. And it's really from a point of view of um, being generally available, we're looking at sometime in September. So take it away. OK. Um, trying to figure out why this is flashing, but hopefully we'll just go with it. And apologies for the flash. Wasn't you? <laughs> All right. Um, well, we're the, the last talk be, before lunch, so uh, bear with us. Uh, it'll be lots of fun, though. OK, let, let's start back uh, a bit on storage for Kubernetes. So three or four years ago, I was working with a small team. And we, we looked at this cool new technology, Kubernetes, up and coming. And uh, we were working on storage. And we thought, well, OK, here's storage. Um, storage is separate from Kubernetes. It's something external. Why is it external? Um, why does it have to be this separate, uh, separate, separate platform to manage? I don't want it to be separate. I want it to be part of the same cluster that I'm already running my apps in. You know, Kubernetes is supposed to solve all of my problems to run my distributed applications. Well, what about storage? Uh, so this is where Rook started. Um, so a bit more on the storage li uh, limitations we might see with traditional storage. So first of all, it's, it's not portable. Uh, you know, if you run an AWS, you use AWS as storage. You use S3 and uh, EBS and, and all that. You run on uh, another cloud provider, you have other, um, other storage. But what about on-premise then? What do you do for storage? Well, then you buy an appliance and you plug it in, and it's this external entity. Um, so let's get, let's get past that. Um, let's put storage on Kubernetes. Um, so in, inside, my, inside my same nodes, and now my slides are done. Oh, man. Um, on the same nodes, I'm running all of my Kubernetes applications. Let's just treat storage as another application. It's in the world of software-defined storage, I can take my storage and I can run it on Kubernetes as my distributed platform. So wherever Kubernetes runs, uh, we want to run our storage with it. So if I'm, I'm on-premise now, I have a solution that I can have storage, and I can take it to the cloud if I want to run the cloud. And this is how we get that, that portability. We have a platform that will run my storage wherever Kubernetes or OpenShift are running. So where does Rook come in? So Rook really is a framework for running storage providers uh, on, on Kubernetes. It's been designed from the ground up for Kubernetes. And it takes storage uh, platforms that were designed before the time of Kubernetes and brings them in and makes them look like they're part of, of the platform. So it extends Kubernetes uh, with custom types and controllers. So these, these are what we, you, know, you may hear a lot about these. So custom resource definitions, or CRDs, is how we extend Kubernetes. Um, and then controllers, uh, custom controllers we call operators. Um, so when, when I first attended my first KubeCon a couple of years ago uh, is when the operators pattern was announced. And we said, oh, that's exactly what we want to do with, uh, with storage. We want to have an operator that automates everything around the storage for you so that you don't have to think about it. You shouldn't have to go manage every, um, every daemon that's running and, and all of your storage. Just let the Rook operator take care of it for you. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is an upstream project. It's, it's all open source, Apache 2.0 license. And uh, last year was accepted as a uh, CNCF project. Uh, and the first 
the first storage project uh, around CNCF and the Kubernetes ecosystem. So it's been, it's been a fun journey. Um, so let's get more into what Rook is um, and how it works. So, the, so Rook, at the end of the day, it's going to run as, as a pod. So the Rook operator is, uh, runs as a, a container, a pod, and it's going to manage, uh, launch other pods and configure uh, these storage providers for you. So Rook supports multiple storage providers today. Ceph is where we started. It's the first one, and, and we've declared Ceph as stable inside Rook. There are others that we've since added that are still in alpha state, so you'll see icons there for CockroachDB and, um, and Minio, um, EdgeFS. Um, I'm going to forget a couple. We've got six now. But at the end of the day, if you need storage, Rook uh, intends to bring it to you in a Kubernetes way. And now that you've got storage in your cluster, so on the far right side of this slide, what we see are your client pods. So you have your applications that are essentially clients to the storage. They need to consume that storage. And this is where we get the, the Rook drivers, uh, the Flex driver, and we have a CSI driver now that will allow you to attach your storage. And instead of that, that attaching and mounting of storage that's outside of the cluster, it's just inside uh, the, same, the same cluster. Here's a picture of what it really looks like as far as what all of the, the demons that we're running. So this is a picture of, of the Ceph um, architecture with Rook. Um, so at the top of the, this picture, what you have is you have your applications that need storage. Uh, they're going to create uh, volume claims or um, you know, using PVCs, uh, just the standard way that you plug in <coughs> your storage to Kubernetes. And those, um, those PVCs, they're going to connect up to the Rook storage and make it look like one, uh, one storage layer. You've got your, so all the different, uh, there's, there's lots of Rook demons actually, but you only have to worry about starting one of them effectively. You start the operator, that's the, the one right in the middle there, and it starts all of the others. The agents, the mons, the managers, the OSDs. Uh, so Ceph, um, Ceph is a software-defined storage um, system that's been around for a number of years in production. But again, it was designed before uh, the world of Kubernetes. So now Rook <coughs> took the containerized version of Ceph um, and creates the Kubernetes resources, the deployments, the pods, uh, and all of those, those Kubernetes resources that are needed. Um, and then Kubernetes helps us keep it healthy and keep it running. So let's talk about the operator pattern for a minute. So the operator pattern means that you want to specify how you want the, your cluster to look. You specify your desired state, and an operator as a custom controller is going to go make that happen. So the, there's this, um, this, this control loop where the operator is going to watch, and it's going to say, what state do you want in your in your cluster. So it's going to watch for um, these, what we call a cluster CRD. So the, you say, and the CRD is really just another YAML file. If you, you know, if you worked much with Kubernetes and OpenShift, you know that there's lots of YAML files everywhere. Um, but Rook is going to watch for those. It's going to see when you create one. So as soon as you create one, the operator will wake up and it'll say, oh, you want to start a Ceph cluster. Let me go do that for you. So we'll analyze and, and then act on, on that state. OK, so again, CRDs, these are Kubernetes resources that make it look like your types are first class objects in the system. Um, they look like you know, other resources, pods. And then you can work with them with the standard Kubernetes and, and OpenShift tools uh, that you already have for you know, OC if you're in OpenShift or kubectl if you are in Kubernetes. And the CRDs are really just a way to describe your desired state. Um, so the Rook specifically, an operator will handle upgrades. It will um, manage everything about keeping your system running. But one important note is that it's not on the data path. So the, the data, as your data moves around, uh, 
you know, whatever your, if your databases are consuming the data, wherever uh, your data is going. Your data is purely between the, the storage provider daemons. Uh, for example, the Ceph daemons are the ones that, that you're communicating with. The operator can actually go down, uh, be offline for minutes or some time, and the data path keeps working just fine. Um, yeah, for OpenShift, uh, just a couple of notes to point out. There are, um, due to the security constraints, uh, network configurations, uh, I'll just point out there's a couple extra steps uh, on, on the Rook documentation on how to get it to work with OpenShift, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it's all available today upstream. You can run it in, in OpenShift. Uh, just as a summary before I jump into a, a demo for what Rook is, is starting, so there are lots of Ceph daemons that make your block object and, and file storage work. So the mons, uh, the mons are really the brains of the Ceph cluster. The mons uh, use a Paxos algorithm and need majority online. And it's a way you can have a distributed application to be secure. It's similar to etcd, um, it keeps your distributed data platform safe. OSDs are where the data is actually stored on the individual nodes. So Rook will start those, those daemons to manage the data locally. RGW for object storage and, and on and on. There, there are a number of daemons that Rook will manage for you. All right, so a little demo I wanted to show. So those who went through the workshop uh, this morning, uh, this is basically what we did. Uh, we started up a number of nodes uh, in OpenShift. So we had the master, of course, then there were three application nodes that we started with. And then we added three new nodes for storage specifically. Um, and this was to show that, well, you, even in the same cluster, you can kind of partition nodes to work for storage and tell Rook only run on these nodes and you know, run my application pods on the other nodes. There's no reason you have to do this, but this was uh, how the demo went. So on the first three nodes, we start an application for just a sim really simple Rails application that uses a Postgres database. Uh, this uh, running on the first three nodes. The other three nodes uh, ran Ceph. And let me just dive into uh, what this looks like. So get nodes. Uh, so, sh so these nodes, I got, again, the master, I got an infra node, and then six compute nodes where the three were for my application and three were for Ceph. Now, I've, I've already got this whole thing running just for time constraints. Uh, so right now I'm in the, the Rook Ceph system namespace. So let me show you the pods here. So in, in here you see in the middle, the operator pod um, is running, one instance of that. And it basically orchestrated starting all of the other pods in the system. So I started up a Rook agent on each of the nodes so that you can attach the storage. I started up discover pods on each node so that it can discover what local devices you have available. And then when we created the cluster CRD, it created all the other daemons. So in, when we switch over to the project for Rook Ceph, which is where they were started. So in here now we have the mons, the OSDs, um, and what we call a, a toolbox. So Ceph is running, it's healthy. Uh, now I'm gonna connect to the toolbox pod, which allows us to run any Ceph command we want. Um, so I've got this command already in here. Okay, if I run Ceph status now, wish we had more time to not jump through so much, but. Okay, the Ceph status shows I have three monitors. They're all up and running, they're in Quorum. Um, they are low in, on available space. That's just an artifact of our, our demo machines that didn't have much space. There are six OSDs on the three nodes and they're all up and healthy. Okay, it's all good. Now, now that we know Ceph is healthy, let's look at the application. Oops, I wanna go out of presentation mode. And all right, here's, here's a little application. Our Rails application, you know, list articles, add articles. I can uh, do things like 
show, edit, dis destroy. Let's see, I can't find my mouse anywhere. Anybody else see my mouse? <laughs> ah, here it is. Okay, so let me just uh, show a couple things here. So this, I've added something to my database. It says, oh, there's this article that Rook is being hosted by the CNCF. I say this is awesome, and that says this is old news. Rook is an incubation project now. Uh, anybody else have a comment? Um, I'll just say hello. Okay. So this application, when I click create comment, it's just going to add something else to my database, uh, and here it is. Now what I want to show is that even if a node goes down and one third of the storage is gone from Ceph, everything will just keep on working because my data is replicated across nodes. So Rook has configured this. I've configured this so it makes two copies of the data on, on different nodes. Okay, so if I uh, come back over here, uh, I'm going to copy a command that, that shuts down. So I'm, I'm going to SSH to one of my nodes. Okay, drop out of that. And hopefully this connects. All right, so now I'm connecting to one of the nodes that was running uh, Ceph. And I want to actually shut down this node. So as soon as I hit shut down on this node, my mon and my OSDs on that node are going to be completely gone. Okay, and I lost my SSH connection because the node is down. Now, if everything's working properly, I'd expect to be able to go back to uh, my app and everything should continue working correctly. So let's see how, how lucky we're feeling. All right, so I should be able to refresh, first of all. Okay, it's working. Can I add a new, um, new comment? Um, I don't know what to say, so create comment, and I clicked the wrong button. I'm sorry. <laughs> create comment is what I want. Okay, it says comment was created successfully. So even though we have one node that's down, um, I'm able to continue writing to my cluster because I've got Ceph managing that storage in, you know, in a software-defined storage way. And just to show you that, that it's down, and hopefully you believe me, uh, let me connect back to the toolbox and see what the Ceph status looks like. So Ceph status should show us. Okay, we've got a warning. Uh, two OSDs are down. Uh, one host was down with two OSDs on it. Uh, we lost a mon. Only two were left in quorum. But the important thing here is that because we still have that quorum, uh, the, the storage is still safe. It's still working fine. All right, so that's, in a nutshell, how your storage can still be safe even in the face of failure um, with Kubernetes. Yeah, and just to make a point on that, if you've worked with Ceph before, you, you know that you usually have not three OSDs or six on, you have tons of OSDs. Um, what I think, you know, moving this into OpenShift is I, I guess you could call it Ceph on a small scale. So what Travis did was, was basically just three, three OpenShift nodes. He could have even just had three OSDs and you would have seen the same behavior. So it's, it's, it's something that's probably different than the way, you know, Ceph has been used in the past, um, but it's, it's how we're doing it today with Gluster. Um, you know, very small footprint of, of nodes, storage serving everything to the OpenShift workloads. Yeah. Thanks, Annette. Um, so that, that's the demo in a nutshell. Your storage, uh, keeping safe in OpenShift. Uh, it, yeah, it's all working up, upstream today. Go, go try it out, rook.io is the site. And we're out of time, I think, to talk a lot more through it. But uh, yeah, looking forward to working with you. All right. Well, thank you, Travis, and uh, yeah. 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 Thanks.